Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. And what you guys are looking at here, these are a bunch of nickel metal hydride batteries. They are from a Toyota Camry Hybrid Taxi. My buddy um, Royal Racing Tech uh, got these for me. Each one of these has uh, six cells and um, they're good for six and a half amp hours. Open circuit, there were about seven and a half volts with the light bulb on it there. You guys could see it's about 6.77. Once again, open circuit, there are about seven and a half volts. And the reason why I'm making this video on these things is these are these are becoming available. You could buy these on eBay, um, fairly reasonable, especially if they're untested. Um, you know, uh, if one has a source at a uh, at a wrecking yard, perhaps you could get the whole battery. They put 36 of these in a um, car. Uh, and this is this is the newer version. I don't think they're Gen 3s. They're probably Gen 2s. So um, that's what we have there. This pile of 14 would be somewhere around 15 volts at 45 amp hours. So equal to kind of a small car battery, actually. Or it would be um, 7.5 volts. At a little over 90 amp hours, there's a little round off in that. Depending, that they're rated at six and a half, um, depending how many amp hours you actually get. <clears throat> the bad thing about them is, um, once again, you put two of them together, open circuit. Um, depending on how good the nickel metal hydride batteries are, they're you know the lower end of good is is somewhere around of 1.2 volts if they're really good they're about 1.4 volts so 1.4 times 6 takes you up to 8.4 so a fully charged one would be 8.4 if you put two of those together that's 16.8 which kind of puts you outside the range of most 12 volt systems if one had to charge these, theoretically, uh, solar collectors, uh, open circuit, you know, without the regulator on them, you could charge them with that. But um, if you put the regulator in there, once again, you're trying to charge them up to 12.8 or 13.4, where, wherever you, uh, you float a battery at. Well, 13.4 is quite a bit different than... Um, than what these things are used to. It's a little bit low. So using them for a project would be, you, you know, a little interesting. But they are available out there, and, and they are kind of cool for lighting and so forth. Like that's that's just six and, you know, call it seven volts going through a light bulb. You get some halfway decent light out of it. For um, LEDs, LED lighting, LED lighting is not all that uh, fussy. The um, LED headlights I, I recently put on my ATV, they, they, they seem to fire up somewhere around 8 volts, depending on which one you're, you're messing with, 8, 8.5. And, and supposedly they're good up to 24. So um, a couple of these could easily light that up and light it up for quite a while. Okay, let's talk two other topics just quickly. Let's talk about charging these things. Um, they say the way you should charge them, like these are six and a half amp hours. Um, what you're supposed to do is run them down and then charge them at the rate over six and a half amp hours, which is their capacity. You divide that by 10, so theoretically you, you charge these at six, at, 0.65 amps for 10 hours that'll put the six and a half amp hours in them it doesn't overcharge them as soon as they're charged you're supposed to take them off the charger you do not let these continuously charge that's not good for them. 
that's uh, that's one thing. If you do continuously charge them, you have the possibility of failure, and we know these things could light up and and burn and get into all kinds of trouble, right? We've seen that with cell phone type stuff and others lithium ion but these these two you you really don't want to overdo it with them because they could get into trouble another thing should you drop this it's pretty heavy and you could just imagine how it would break and this cells would short together uh another another dangerous thing um should you manage to get a whole battery a whole hybrid car battery um when these things are ganged together you could get into the hundreds of volts, especially if you got 38 of them. I'm not sure if it runs them all in series or if it runs a, a bunch of parallel series um, situation. I'm not quite sure what voltages those those motors run at. But um, I, I have seen people comment as they went to take them apart. Hey, you know, we got quite a bit of voltage here. Um, I have to be careful and no matter what once again, you don't want to short these together Especially if you short them together in a stack like this one of these could torch off others And then you could end up doing quite a bit of damage uh, Arc welding, you know heat all that all those things uh, Not good for you, but once again quick video I just wanted to show you guys these things are becoming available Should you uh, track them down because you have all kinds of plans do be aware they are typically you know seven and a half volts fully charged 8.4 if they're less than six volts I'm told they're not any good anymore some people do take the not good ones recondition them and seem to bring them somewhat back to life my experience with reconditioning other batteries um, I have no experience with these yet but reconditioning other batteries it seems that when you recondition them they get they tend to get a little bit fussy they don't hold the power as well they need to be charged more frequently or they don't hold their capacity as well they seem to be need to be charged more frequently um, and with these that could really be a problem because you're not supposed to overcharge them and you, you know so forth so I, once again they say the dividing line is if you check them open circuit and you get um, less than six volts, they're no good. Typically, you'll find them somewhere around seven and a half. If they're freshly charged, all ready to go, and they're really good, you'll see something like 8.4 volts on them. Once again, six and a half amp hours of capacity. I was kind of thinking they were more, but the literature says six and a half amp hours. They might have put films in here a little a little thicker than that or perhaps they don't have the same capacity as lithium ions because i i just thought once again they would be a little more than that but that's that's not not too bad obviously they put these in hybrid cars so they deal with the the hot the cold vibration all kinds of other stuff assuming they're packaged up just right um, and they seem to last for years and years and years, but I'm assuming that the uh, your car charger also deals with them from a best point of view, right? You, they, they make sure that they're charged just right. Not too much, not too little, and all that. Um, from the literature, I've also seen that um, should you find a battery and start taking apart, typically the cells in the center are not as good as the ones around the edges i don't know if that's a heat thing that the ones in the center um tend to run hot or if for some reason the ones in the center are charged differently than the ones around the outside i know that you can have a bunch of batteries on a on a bus bar and uh, you could be drawing current off of it even though they're all on the same bus bar, the ones on the um, closest to the load have a tendency to discharge first. So um, it could have something to do with that also. So I've just told you everything I know about hybrid car batteries. I have been kind of looking around. I haven't haven't really seen any any uh, uh, solar projects with them or anything yet. So um, I'm going to keep looking. I do have um solar panels down here somewhere and i i would actually like 
to uh, to get moving on some of those solar projects. So we'll see. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching this video. Remember to keep your feet down, your heads up, and get out there and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.